Special shout out to Amaze for sponsoring this video. Enter for your chance to win a custom Tesla Model S and help an amazing organization like Give Power at the same time. Picture this, endless clean energy with no harmful emissions made using nothing but seawater. Sounds like an eco-evangelist pipe dream, right? Well, guess what? This is basically the theory behind nuclear fusion, the potential key to finally unlocking sustainable energy. The problem, after decades of research and billions of dollars spent, we still have yet to see a viable fusion reactor. But recent breakthroughs suggest that the reality may be closer than once expected. So can fusion energy truly rescue us from fossil fuels? And can they arrive before it's too late? That is a question we thought deserved a deeper dive here today on 2-Bit DaVinci. When it comes to energy efficiency, humanity has a pretty terrible track record. Even our biggest energy breakthroughs tend to devour natural resources like Pac-Man, while also emitting destructive byproducts, <clears throat> carbon dioxide. On average, the US alone produces roughly 6 billion metric tons of carbon emissions every year. That's the equivalent of over 1 billion African elephants or 18,126, not 25, empire state buildings. And over 75% of it comes from fossil fuels. Many developed nations are slowly phasing out fossil fuels, but the trick has been finding a viable replacement. Of course, there's wind and solar, but even these options eat up acres of land and can also vary in terms of predictable generation. Nuclear fusion is an incredibly promising solution to these power struggles. You see what I did there? But wait, you ask, why don't we already have nuclear energy? The answer is yes. Oh, sorry, I read that way wrong. But wait, you ask, don't we already have nuclear energy? The answer is yes. Currently about 20% of power produced in the US comes from nuclear power plants. The difference is that these plants use a process called fission. Since our goal is to keep everyone awake on this channel, for this video, we'll give you a 30,000 foot view, but we'll put links to videos that really get into this into a deeper level in the description. But essentially, fission involves taking a fuel rod, usually plutonium or uranium, and blasting it with high energy neutrons, which cause the atoms in the fuel, in particular the nucleus, to break apart hence the word nuclear. This sets off a chain reaction, since atoms that are exploding will hit other atoms, causing them to then in turn explode and so on and so forth. That energy produces heat, which is used to heat up and evaporate water, resulting in a high energy steam that then runs and powers turbines, which then generates electricity, which we then harness to charge our cell phones so we can watch more cat videos. Hooray science! Nuclear energy has often been hailed as a top contender to replace fossil fuels. Compared to coal and natural gas, nuclear power is cheaper, cleaner, and more energy dense. But of course, nuclear fission has a handful of drawbacks you're probably thinking of. The exact process that makes fission so effective is also what makes it so dangerous. As chain reactions occur inside the reactors, they produce toxic waste that can be incredibly dangerous and difficult to store. At their current rate, the nuclear reactors in the US produce over 2,000 metric tons of radioactive waste every year. Perhaps worst of all, all this nuclear waste can take literally thousands of years to go over half-life and half-life and decay until it's no longer harmful to life. And all this harmful waste this is just a natural end result when nuclear fission goes right. Nuclear meltdowns like the Chernobyl disaster, Fukushima, and Three Mile Island serve as bleak, worst case scenarios of what can happen when nuclear fission goes wrong. Fusion, on the other hand, is the exact opposite of fission, and it contains all the benefits with none of the risk. It produces virtually no carbon dioxide emissions or radioactive waste, and it is fully controllable, unlike wind and solar. So again, why isn't this a thing yet? The difficulty is finding a way to actually achieve fusion. The process occurs naturally in all stars all the time. As we've mentioned before, it's the exact opposite of fission. Where fission involves breaking atoms apart, fusion is all about bringing atoms together. Oh, that's nice. Fusion requires a fuel. Some stars use hydrogen. Their immense heat and gravity allow the precise conditions for the hydrogen particles to heat up and essentially override their natural electromagnetic repulsion to collide into one another, forming a new atom with less mass than the original two, helium. It's this missing mass that is given off as energy. On Earth, scientists use more pliable elements, deuterium and tritium as a fuel source. 
both of which are isotopes or variants of hydrogen. Hydrogen being a key ingredient in water, which makes up like all of our oceans. That's right, nuclear fusion would allow unlimited energy using water as its fuel. Experts believe that just one gallon of seawater could produce as much energy as 300 gallons of petrol. Before we get back to the video, I'll take a quick moment to tell you about our sponsor, Omaze. Omaze has been a long-term friend of the channel, and if you follow the link in the description, you'll get a chance to win a Tesla Model S and $20,000 cash. And it's not just your average Model S. This matte graphite Tesla was customized by the amazing people at Unplugged Performance. This beast is capable of 0 to 60 in 2.3 seconds and also comes with cool racing bits like a carbon fiber wide body kit, spoiler diffuser, and premium Tesla features like the biodefense air filtration system and full self-driving. And the win-win portion of this is that you'll be doing your part to help an amazing organization like Give Power, who use their solar water farms to provide clean water, food security, and electricity to regions in need around the world. They purify and desalinate water source from the ocean, providing long-term renewably powered drinking water solutions for many living in brutally dry conditions. So for your chance to win this amazing prize and help out an amazing organization, check out the link in the description. The problem with nuclear fusion has never really been with the what or the why, but rather the how. So far, scientists have really only cracked one surefire way of achieving nuclear fusion. A nuclear explosion, essentially using nuclear fission to create a fusion explosion. But ideally, scientists are working on ways to achieve fusion without incinerating the cities they're trying to power. Speaking of blowing things up, there is no more surefire way to make sure this video blows up than by hitting that like button and letting YouTube know you're having a good time. And did you know that that actually will increase our chances of seeing nuclear fusion in our lifetimes? It's true. No, it won't. It's true. No, it won't. Just hit the like button. To do this is really simple. Just replicate the conditions of the sun in the laboratory. How hard could it be? Believe it or not, engineers the world over have already checked that box. The most well-developed and well-funded approach to fusion energy is a machine called the tokamak. Tokamak is a Russian acronym, meaning toroidal chamber with axial magnetic field. Obviously, couldn't, couldn't be simpler. It emerged back in the 1960s and actually served as inspiration for Tony Stark's arc reactor. Tokamaks are powerful electromagnetic fields to confine heat and plasma inside a donut-shaped vacuum chamber between 150 and 300 million degrees centigrade. Other promising fusion technologies include inertial confinement fusion, where powerful pulse lasers or ion beams compress a small fuel pellet to extremely high densities. What isn't made better by using lasers? The resulting shock wave heats the plasma before it has time to dissipate. Nuclear fusion is so cool, even the kids are getting in on it. Literally. In fact, in 2018, 12 year old Jackson Oswald of Texas won a Guinness World Record, becoming the youngest person in history to build a working fusion reactor. I think I was playing with Ninja Turtles when I was 12 years old, this kid. So if the technology exists and its benefits clearly surpass other energy generating methods, why don't we see nuclear reactors in use? The reality is that when it comes to fusion energy, there are a couple of catches. The first is efficiency. So far, no one has developed a fusion reactor that produces more energy than it consumes. What experts call the fusion energy gain factor, or Q factor. Q1, or break even, happens when the fusion reaction generates the same amount of power as it consumes. To be considered viable, fusion reactors would need a Q factor of 10 or more. Otherwise, all the cost and complexity wouldn't really be worth it. That's where things get a bit more discouraging. The record Q was held by a company called the Joint European Taurus, or JET, who achieved a Q value of 0 0.67 all the way back in 1997, producing 16 megawatts of fusion energy while injecting 24 megawatts of thermal power to heat the fuel. The second major catch is that advances in fusion technology have moved incredibly slowly. The saying is that fusion technology is always 30 years away, which at this point is less a funny joke and more of a sad, frustrating reality. Fusion is the white whale scientists began chasing as early as the 1930s, with the first fusion reactors not emerging until the 1950s. Even many of the current breakthrough fusion projects began in the 1980s and 1990s. In that time span, other proven technologies have emerged, such as wind and solar. Meanwhile, high-profile fusion projects have continually gone over budget while also missing development deadlines. Both governments and private companies question whether it's worth investing in an expensive, 
uncertain technology over proven technologies while our planet is on a very strict environmental deadline. While progress has been slow, governments and private companies alike have seen major breakthroughs. The International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, or ITER, is one of the most ambitious energy projects in the world. Launched in 1985 and funded by a consortium of 35 nations, ITER is building the world's largest tokamak with a projected Q factor of 10, producing 500 megawatts of power while requiring only 50 megawatts to run. Of course, funding for these types of global initiatives vary wildly, and depending on if those countries or BFFs are at war this week, it's hard to really say just what is going to happen. Over the decades, ITER has experienced some major setbacks, but is projected to begin plasma experiments by 2025. Another promising endeavor, China's Institute of Plasma Physics have developed an experimental advanced semiconducting tokamak, which in November of 2018, became the world's first fusion reactor to reach 100 million degrees centigrade. Another major breakthrough recently occurred at MIT, as students developed an innovative solution to a long-standing challenge facing practical fusion, exhaust. The class utilized high temperature superconducting magnets to help shed heat from inside the fusion reactor, comparable to a car's exhaust pipe. With this type of global competition, each individual nation and company chips away yet another piece of the puzzle, closing that 30-year gap and making fusion technology seem like a truly viable energy option. The next few years are critical. In altering our climate trajectory, the world's leaders will need to start making bold decisions about where to invest money, time, and resources. Wind, solar, and other renewables might only provide energy at certain times in the day which would require us to invest in huge levels of grid store batteries. Then those batteries could power cities when the wind wasn't blowing or the sun wasn't shining. But in contrast, nuclear fusion is a base load power technology, capable of generating a steady, consistent output 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It will be crucial that we have a clean blend of both renewable and base load power generation if we're truly to clean up our act and our utility grids. When it comes to breakthroughs in science, engineering, and technology, I think we should take a page from the COVID-19 vaccination response. Just because one company said they had a cure didn't mean everyone else just folded up shop and went on holiday. Instead, it was a global challenge to see different teams around the world approach the same problem with wildly different solutions. I think the same reality is key for the future of energy. We should be investing in hydrogen as a fuel, maybe for cargo tankers or other large vessels, or fusion as the future of nuclear base load power plants. When lots of smart people are all working to solve these problems from different angles, we maximize our chances of success and truly meaningful breakthroughs. Maybe the crazy fusion breakthrough happens in the next five years, or maybe wind and solar and battery storage get so good that it wins out. So rather than betting on a winner, let's see how good these technologies emerge in the next five years. But what do you think? Is nuclear fusion still worth investing time and money into? Or should these resources go another way? Take, the um, take to the comment section and let us know what you think. All right, so that does it for our look into the future of nuclear fusion. The potential and the upside is wildly incredible. It would pretty much solve all of our problems. But clearly, getting there has not been easy. So thank you to all of our viewers for watching and thank you especially to all of our patrons on Patreon and our YouTube channel members. Your support really helps make this show possible. And if you wanna help us actually with picking topics and writing scripts and being a part of the team, join us as a YouTube member or on Patreon to get access to our Discord server. And take a look around our channel. Odds are you'll probably have some other videos you'll like watching as well. And until next time, I'm Ricky and this is Tuba Da Vinci.